This conference will now be recorded. Yeah, please go ahead. Hi. Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining this call today. Uh, so currently we have today two PRs. Um, firstly, I will uh, share the other one. Just give me a second. Okay, is my screen visible? Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, earlier we proposed uh, MSTP feature in it, uh, Sonic. For that, uh, we proposed some general uh, uh, Rita, sorry. Uh, Rita, I think you are showing the other. Uh, you're still showing the web page of the switchboard hybrid mode, not the MSTP track. Okay. Okay. Okay, just give me a second. Okay. Uh, is it fine, Ravi? Yeah, we can see that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, so we have proposed a feature MSTP in Sonic. For that, uh, we proposed a change in Psi, uh, where we were proposing a change in if host file. And uh, earlier, we proposed that we will be introducing a new trap for MSTP. For that, we had some conversation with Ravi uh, on the HLD review time and on the PR as well. And for that, after our discussion, we decided that we should not be uh, continuing further with this change as uh, we don't need this trap uh, further. Uh, currently, we have a trap STP and we can use those trap for both MSTP and STP as well. So uh, this is just for the community information that we will be closing this PR and we have just created PR, this PR for the SAI community folks uh, for further clarity. Okay. Uh, do anyone have any concerns on this? Uh, uh, Rita, can you add details that how you are achieving MSTP functionality using STP as well as the other things? Is it captured in the okay. notes somewhere? Yes, uh, we had proposed to detail HLD. Uh, and in that we were just using the STP BPDUs uh, for the MSTP traps as well. Uh, can you just, uh, Jay, can you just clarify, do you want me, do you want me to guide you for the STP specific trap that we are using? Yeah, yeah I was saying for that. the MSTP as well. Yeah, yeah, if you can add that comment in this PR. So in future, if anybody, you know, we always refer back then you will know that why this PR was closed and let's say somebody else uh, need to understand them, they can just okay. So I think you have okay. captured, so, sorry, sorry, you, you have already captured. You can use yes. trap type uh, as the Mac and LLC. Yeah, I think you have already captured that. I think you're good. Yes. Thank uh, you. Okay, thank you, Jay. Uh, I think community don't have any concern for this. This is just for the information that we will be closing this PR. Uh, so now I will be moving forward to my other PR. Let me share screen for that post. Okay, so this is our new uh, proposed feature uh, switch for mode hybrid in Sonic. Um, the background of this PR is that earlier we have proposed uh, two port modes, switchboard mode access and uh, trunk in Sonic, uh, but they, the changes were done only in the uh, CLI level. Now we are proposing a switchboard mode hybrid. A hybrid mode will be a mode that will be supporting both tag, multiple uh, supporting both multiple untagged and tag VLANs in Sonic. And this is the functionality for the switchboard modes for the uh, hybrid. A hybrid mode will be supporting both tag and uh, untag VLANs multiple. And for that, for specific uh, catering of untag VLANs, they, we will be 
handling PVIDs in Sonic. Uh, if the PVID will be matching, then the switch will be passing the traffic. Otherwise, it will be dropped of those packet. And uh, this is the sample topology for that, where you can see uh, we will be setting PVIDs for the untagged frames specifically. The tag frame will be handled in the same way as they are hand handling currently in Sonic for trunk modes. Um, now, there, there is the point where I need uh, Sci guidance and Sci members' suggestions. We are proposing three options. Uh, option number one is that we will introduce the concept of PVID in Sonic. What I am seeing uh, currently, uh, PVID Vila, concept is. Vila, sorry to interrupt is, you. Is, uh, yeah, um, you went way too fast. I'm paying attention to this PR for the very first time. Um, okay, sorry. No, so, uh, so uh, if you can just. Uh, back up a little bit, go on the diagram before. And I have not okay. reviewed the Sonic HL, HLD as well, so I don't have any context. So, okay, so let me understand. Uh, so, in this case, what you are doing, you have an L2 network. And yes. then on an L2 network, typically we have the VLANs and they emit the corresponding uh, uh, right? So in this yes. case, we want to accept uh, untagged packets on a given port. Um, sorry, sir, I did not hear you properly. There is a background noise. Uh, I don't know. Okay. So uh, what I was asking that, uh, how does the configuration work? So we are expecting untagged packets on a port which is configured for VLAN. Is that the basic requirement? Yes. Yes. Oh, oh, okay. Um, let me just give you a brief for the previous uh, contribution we have done in Sonic. Uh, what we have done, we have proposed the uh, basically currently in Sonic, uh, what was handling in Sonic that there is the notion of uh, untagged and tagged VLANs, but there was no concept of uh, specifically port modes that is excess trunk and hybrid. What we propose, we just propose these trunk excess and hybrid mode at the CLI level. Uh, when a user want to configure a port as excess, the excess port will, will be handling only one untagged traffic. And when user will configure a port as trunk, it will be handling one untagged and multiple tag VLANs. And uh, what we did, uh, we did just introduce the new command switch port mode uh, excess or trunk. And the routed way was the generic was default that was uh, L3 when the switch is in L3 network. And uh, to answer your question, when a switch is in access mode, it can have only one untagged traffic. And uh, what we did with it, we just added a mode attribute in the, in the mode table at the CLI level. At the runtime, the, paper, the mode attribute will be created and the user will uh, create any port as access or trunk. And based on these trunk full of functionalities, they can further proceed. Okay, so functionally, so I mean, it's still functionally, how does it look? I'm so confused. So, uh, so you're accepting, so if it's a trunk mode, so you have one VLAN, right? The base VLAN for untagged, and then you have a other VLANs for the VLAN pad. Uh, yes. Okay, so how does that differ from this proposal? So, Yes, uh, uh, this proposal differ is that uh, from that in a trunk port, a trunk port allows only uh, one untagged and multiple tag VLANs. In Correct. this proposal, the new new proposal which I am currently presenting, here we are proposing the concept of hybrid port in mode in Sonic. A hybrid port mode is a mode that support both uh, uh, that that support multiple untagged VLANs and multiple tag VLANs on a specific port. So it's, it's sort yeah. of a mix of uh, access and talk. Yes, it's a mixture of both. Okay, got it, got it. Okay, and in this case... Uh, uh, <clears throat> oh, uh, sorry, uh, one quick comment is that it's, it's not a mixture. It's a separate thing because in access, we have only one 
uh, and uh, uh, strictly one untagged member. But in hybrid, you can have multiple untagged. So it's just, it, it, we can say that it's a superset of uh, uh, trunk and access port mode. Got it. Got it. Uh, Matt, so one question here, right? If a packet comes in, an untagged packet comes in, right? And if you have multiple VLANs, how do you know if you have multiple untagged VLANs and as a packet comes on the port, how do you know which should be the VLAN asset with the packet? Yes, uh, yes, Ravi. Uh, currently, we are just uh, uh, proposing three options for that. Uh, we are just saying that uh, in the option number one, uh, what we do, we will be introducing the concept of PVITs. By PVIT, the, by setting the PVIT, the switch will be handling which uh, VLAN it will be forwarding the traffic. Okay. This will be only uh, one VLAN, yeah. right? You cannot uh, assert multiple VLANs with PVID. Yes, yes. What you're yes. saying is that you want what? to assert multiple VLANs with a single port, multiple untagged VLANs with a single port. That is multiple not possible. PVID. Right? Yes. So what uh, I think, yes. what I heard Matty was talking about is right, you, in hybrid mode, you say you want to support multiple untagged VLANs of the same port. Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. That yes. I think yes. is not possible, but yeah, go through all the modes, but let's see. Okay. So the first uh, one doesn't work so because you're talking about a single PVID, right? So you cannot support yes. it. Whatever all the untagged packets will be assigned with a single PVID. You cannot have multiple such VLANs. Uh, so we cannot work in the way that we can add the multiple PVIDs and it works the same way as it is working currently for the tag members. Uh, it is a simple, simple way, right? My... The device, how, yeah, how the device know when an untagged packet comes in? Even if you give multiple PVIDs on the port, how would the hardware pick one of those PVIDs? Exactly. It needs so to be able to differentiate, yeah. right? It needs to differentiate. I, I mean, look at the packet and say, okay, which uh, untagged VLAN membership should I assign this packet to, right? So if there's no way to differentiate it, how do you pick? Let's say you have yeah. you have assigned untagged VLAN 10, 20, 30. Packet comes in. How do I know it needs to be ten or twenty or thirty? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right example. Yeah, that's where it is. I think whatever more we suggest, there's no way a hardware can solve this. Okay, so uh, we cannot uh, propose any changes at this high level for this specific use for this specific option, right? So uh, I think Rina, the question is more fundamental. So basically today, when uh, a packet comes in, it has an ETH type, right? So ETH type is if dot one Q, it has an associated uh, tag, right? And tag defines what's the VLAN you're gonna go in. But if it packet comes in, right? And if it comes as untagged, so Ravi, I still had questions. I'm still not clear. Maybe there is a probably a way to solve this. Uh, so, so, uh, so Rita, help me here. So, let's say if packet comes as a tagged packet, that will go on a corresponding VLAN, right? Which is configured. That part is clear. Is that how it's going to come? Tagged packet always goes to corresponding VLAN. Yes. Okay. Now, if the packet is coming untagged, meaning that it's either a V4 or V6 type, uh, uh, then you are saying that packet may go into some VLAN, some out of a pool of configured VLANs, which are configured to accept untagged packets. Is that statement correct? Yes. Okay, so if that statement is correct, then the then what Ravi and Jen are saying, right, that problem remains. Basically, how do you demux it? What is, what is the decision which tells you that which VLAN to forward this packet? Yeah. Uh, uh... Can I answer this question? Yes, please. Yes, yes please. Go ahead. Okay, yes, Rida, can you please? Yeah, Rida, can you please go to the uh, the topology diagram that you have shown? Okay, if if we just uh, look at the switch B, so we have actually uh, there's a mention we have host D, but uh, uh, if, if we consider that as a server and with, with multiple uh, VMs running on, on top, so we can have traffic, uh, untagged traffic from uh, multiple VLANs, uh, actually. So so let's uh, just uh, focus on one direction and, and 
we will talk about the other direction uh, later on so the direction is from uh, from switch to the server like from switch b to host t actually that is a server so when the traffic will be coming with the multiple different vlan tags that traffic can be recognized based upon the tags and then will be forwarded as untagged traffic for multiple vlans to the server so that's why if we see in this data we see like we have uh, traffic for vlan 10 and 20 and uh, uh, both of them are untagged so that particular behavior can be achieved if we are able to uh, actually configure multiple PVIDs or untagged VLANs uh, on a particular interface. Right. So, so this is, uh, actually, sorry to interrupt. Uh, so this one is an easier case. Your incoming packet is stacked. Yes. Packet, right. So this yes. is the, I think the more yes. interesting case is going from host A to switch A. Yes. And, and so, so, so let's just focus on the other. So if, if uh, until this point, so, so we are agree that uh, the, the the use case is very straightforward. The, uh, the traffic can be identified based upon the already tagged traffic, and then we can remove those. Uh, hold from hold on, hold on. Uh, I have a yeah. question uh, on switch B. Right? Yes. On that port yeah. that's uh, connected between switch B and switch A, are you saying there's PVID 10 or there's a PVID 10 and PVID 20? Is uh, there a typo? Yeah. Uh, on the yellow. Saying. No, yellow uh, yellow board is actually uh, uh, we, we just on type. You are on type. The, yeah, it it's a tag board. So so the the frame are okay. with the tag are traveling with the tag on these trunk links. Okay, and then uh, so oh, you're oh. saying on switch B you receive a tag packet ten, and sometimes yeah. you need to unicast to a port that belongs to PVID twenty. Yes. So, so yes, exactly. So yeah, they, we can have multi But they don't belong to the same VLAN. How can you do that? That's a membership problem. Yeah. The only way I yeah, can so, think so, of, right? I, I I think the only way you can achieve what you want to do is um, on switch A. I think you better label those ports because uh, it's kind of confusing. Let's say on the yellow port, right? If you make that yellow port as a trunk port, okay, so you can have port uh, on host A coming in with untagged VLAN 10, and you make uh, this yellow port on switch A as a trunk port of both 20 and 10, okay, and make them tag, okay, make them tag. Then your untagged membership on host A come in 10, and then you decide to forward it to your yellow port on switch A as tag VLAN 10. And then you make your switch B as tag, okay, trunk with membership 10 and 20, right? So then you solve your problem. Make sense? There's no, uh, yeah. there's no untagged components here. Basically you receive untagged, but when you send out between switch A and switch B, you need to clearly identify which membership it belongs to VLAN so come in as 10, it goes out as tag 10, switch B knows it's tag 10, then it forwards to the tag 10 membership, which is that host A or host C. But as it goes out, because the port is access, it goes out as untagged. Make sense? Then you solve your problem. Uh, you don't need hybrid mode. No, but then, uh, General, how do you do the forwarding to host D? Host yeah. D. Yeah. yeah, because host D is part of membership 20. So now host D and host B should talk. Host D and host A should never talk, right? So now you get host B coming in with untagged port, right? On that switch A that belongs to VLAN 20. Then switch A knows that, that oh, okay. I learned that Max host D from switch A, uh, that yellow port. So he will forward to that yellow port, but when it goes out, it should hey, need to hey, send out as tag. Wait, General, but there is no VLAN 20 between switch A and switch B. There is only PVID 10. The That's arrow right, because it's yeah. coming in as, because that port is access, okay? So but, it belongs to VLAN 20. No, no, so it's coming in as untagged when it goes yes. from A to switch B, what is the VLAN ID it will carry? VLAN ID 20, 10. Because switch A is a trunk port. 
switch A, that yellow port, it's a trunk port. It belongs to both membership 10 and 20, right? Yeah, that, yeah so, okay, so that we can do, right? So, yes. so, so that, okay. And then based on a 20, you demux and you go out to host. Yeah, that's, that's right. Correct. Yeah. That solves the problem, right? Right. So, so yeah. that's, uh, so yeah, so uh, coming, Mary, so we still is not clear on the forwarding paradigm. And I think in this, the better thing would be that you say what is the life of a packet, like what you are explaining here in this diagram. Okay. Uh, and how you achieve, first, what's the problem, right? Uh, I think the problem yes. itself is a little fuzzy. Then how it would yeah. impact the following. Let me just try once again, like in here, if, if, if yeah. So, um, Actually, what I said earlier is that uh, uh, can you just scroll up a little. Yeah. So, so, so in between switch B and host D. So host D, D is actually not a host. I, I said it's. Uh, let's consider it's a server uh, have it with multiple VLAN uh, and multiple VMs in different VLAN. So, so, so the traffic will be from multiple uh, VLANs, and and we are we are actually connected via one single port. So we have to accept the traffic for multiple VLANs, and uh, and and then uh, send the, those uh, traffic uh, those tag packets to the server with the tags removed. So this behavior can be achieved only if if we have a port with multiple VLANs configured as untagged member. So this is exactly the problem that we are dealing with. Mati, again, the question here, to... right? Uh, Mati, the question yes. here is. Uh, that's where you're starting from, right? So what you're saying is of host D, let's take it as some server or something, right? Now, when it yes. gets untagged, different untagged packets, right? One dark untagged packet yeah. means it's for some destination and uh, the light untagged is for something else, right? How would the server know that uh, if the tag has been removed? How yes. would the server so, now so, know so, which so, is so, the VLAN? Yeah. Yes, so for the other direction, we have actually the MAC base VLAN assignment uh, configuration where we we actually map map uh, particular max to the VLAN and in that way the switch will be able to uh, find out which uh, uh, a VLAN a particular incoming uh, packet belongs to an, an, an untagged uh, packet with a particular MAC and and then we will map uh, map the uh, uh, max to VLAN so we will we'll have a table uh, that will show us the mapping between uh, Mac and VLANs, and using that table, the switch will be able to identify uh, that we, in which uh, particular VLAN uh, that uh, incoming packet actually uh, belongs to. So, in a, in essence, you you basically need to have a uh, untagged packet, but it's based on Mac address. Uh, this would be maybe source Mac. And then to yes. tell that this is the uh, the VLAN that it, it needs to belong to, right? So yeah, yes. then, then so there's something mean, there. It, there's something there that the yeah. hardware may be able to do, uh, because now you have a way to differentiate all untagged packet based on spe uh, special MAC. Um, yeah. yeah. So should it be source MAC or should it be DMAC? It it would be a source MAC because we, the traffic coming from a particular host. And we have to, yeah. Okay, particular host, you want to drive it to a given VM, so based on a source. Yes. Yeah, so it will be a Mac based VNN assignment sort of thing. Be behind this hybrid this documented, port. right? I think we'll let it talk through more. The pictures doesn't explain it. Is the Mac based VLAN assignment happening at the switch A or is it happening yeah. at the. Yeah. It has to happen at switch A as well, otherwise, it won't work. Yeah, actually, it it, it will have the same problem at, at switch A, exact same problem. Host D and switch mm -hmm. A, packet coming from A and B will have the same problem. Uh, actually, it it is uh, uh, it, it, the 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 configuration will be done at the source switch. That the, if, if the server is connected with the source uh, switch B, then the problem actually is very local to switch B. It doesn't belong to switch A because when when the switch B, if if the switch B is able to identify the the untagged traffic based upon MAC and can is able to uh, assign the VLANs then switch right, A will right. not have any problem at all. 
No, no. So uh, won't switch A has to do the same thing based on a source MAC assigned a PVID 10 or PVID 20? Because you are coming yeah. as right? So you have to do MAC based assignment on switch A. No, no, no. Actually, no. Because uh, let's consider that ho host A is actually in VLAN 10 and host B is actually in VLAN 20. So uh, uh, it, it is like host A is, is, is actually communicating to some VM that resides inside host B. So no, no, uh, there is a one-to-one, think... one, yeah. No, no, I think Jay has a point, right? Basically, he, he's trying to tell you that you have the same situation you have on host D where you have multiple VLANs and therefore host B can have also multiple VLANs. And on that switch A, that same port that you connect to host B with multiple uh, v, uh, VMs, uh, then you need to differentiate the MAC, right? Based on that, you can tell this is coming from which VLAN on type VLAN, right? Yeah. Then, yes, then actually, you have, yes. Yeah, that communication yes, right. both way, right? Yes. yes. Yes, actually you're right, but but my point is that uh, the hybrid feature, it is actually uh, particular to the hybrid uh, port mode feature. If, if we need it at switch B, then we will have it on switch B. If if we want it on, on switch A as well, then we will configure it on switch A as well, because if, if we have the same scenario at switch A and B, and we definitely will have the same configuration at A and B as well. Yeah. So, so for your proposal, I think you need probably want to tackle the 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 most complicated case, which cover all the simple case, right? So you should okay. make it. Yeah. Yeah. So both sides okay. require that. So so that make you know okay, easy yes. to understand. Too. So 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 actually actually we will be uh, coming up with a more uh, comprehensive diagram showing the traffic use cases in both direction, like traffic going out and coming in, the tag and untag, all that. Okay, right? I have a, uh, Jeno, I have a question for you. You know, existential question that this is something, you know, which is kind of quirky, right? And I'm not even thinking about loops, etc. what other issues it can cause. And it's specific to a certain requirement and not, not some industry-wide application. Why we are bringing it to SAI? We don't bring uh, uh, you know some quirky implementation unless there are more than one render implementation. Yeah, certainly this is not something common. Um, uh, and I'm wondering if this could be achieved with some kind of ACL. Uh, to, I mean, you, you can you can still have the untag and then have the ACO set on the ingress import to to look at the Mac source Mac and then decide to override the VLAN membership. Uh, at least that solved the ingress problem. Uh, and then on the egress side, uh, it. I mean, as long as you send it out as untag, it's problems on the host side needs to decipher, right? Uh, right. So then there's no, not really a sign change required. Correct. Right. Yeah. Um, no, that's it, that's yeah, my view. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I see that. You know, we have to think it through, but I think you can make it work using ACLs because we have a Mac based VLAN assignment, etc. In the ACLs, right? Yeah. Um, because this is like a impacting a forwarding paradigm, a certain hardware aspect of it. And my thinking is that, you know, at least you know, th this does not belong inside. Uh, right. And also, you know, my... there's no way, yeah, I mean, if you need to make this special parsing logic, then how do you decide how many max that you can match? Right. And then, right, is it going to be 4K? Right. That will be the maximum. I don't know. Uh, if any hardware is willing to commit that kind of a uh, resource uh, to, yeah, like 4K Mac based uh, purport uh, for this kind of PVID assignment on type PVID. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's a, I think it's solvable with ACO uh, to, you know, to achieve the forwarding behavior that 
they're looking for. I mean, as as uh, as far as I know, I think most of the ASIC has the 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 mechanism to do Mac to VLAN mapping. But I I think the issue is why is host D not able to accept um, uh, tag frames? I mean, this seems to be uh, where 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 the issue is, and and I don't understand why host D can't accept tag VLAN, why can't that let the link between switch B and host D be a trunk link? Why does it have to be an untagged link? Yeah, good, good question, yeah. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for your uh, suggestion and guidance. Uh, should I move forward? Currently, what, uh, option number one is not the one we are looking. Uh, let's just move to the other options for this. And uh, then we can I think Rita, uh, Rita, I think what we are talking about, right? Uh, this use case itself is not uh, something uh, that we want. That's the high level uh, purposes. Uh, it's not about uh, using PVAD or something. Rita. What we are trying to see is, right, is it even required or uh, something? That's what we're trying to see. But you can quickly walk to the other options. Yeah, just to see. But I think that was the... Rita, we are basically, I mean, we uh, really trying to be polite. We are questioning the approach. Uh, we are saying that the way you are trying to address it can be solved either using ACLs and I think there was another input where, you know, to host D might just want to use back phones. And uh, yeah, we are asking that why this use case is getting solved by this approach. Isn't there a better approach? And then more fundamental question, which I'm raising, that nonetheless, however you want to solve this problem, this problem does not warrant side changes because this is a very quirky specific use case. This is not something minimally you need at least two or three vendors to agree on that that yeah their hardware will fall. You know, have this defined behavior, etc. Uh, and that's that's what I'm raising. Right, so we are questioning that you know this is actually you, you will consider this for side. Okay. Okay, thank you so much Jay and uh, Ravi for your comments. Yes, agree to both of you, uh, it's just a proposal and we were just also uh, uh, focusing that there would not be some major side changes required for this feature, but we have some internal discussion that we thought that we should put, put our uh, understanding and confusion to the community, they might guide us in a more better way. Um, I just quickly move forward, so we just wrap this up. Yeah, I, I um, have a question here. Can I ask yes, you? please go ahead. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, so uh, uh, we we have uh, uh, certain use cases for that, but but I will not go into the detail of that. But what are the use cases for that? But we have some use cases for this particular situation in the cloud and data center environment. But I, my my question is that uh, can we achieve this functionality using the existing untagged attribute in the side that was actually my question uh maybe i think genoa tried to give certain you know ideas where you can do a mac based vlan assignment based on using acls right and that's your essential requirement is right either at a switch a or at the host d the host D is the host domain, so we don't care. Uh, but in the switching domain, if you need a Mac based assign assignment, you can use Ackles. And then there was another suggestion that you might really don't want to go through the untagged path. What's the compulsion to do that? Uh, it oh, okay, thank you. Right. Okay, so I'll just quickly move forward. Um, option number two was that uh, that we should just, uh, as we said, uh, set already in the option one that we 
use the concept of PVID, but I didn't see any computation for PVID in SIA and SDK. Uh, as far as our understanding, the third thing we were proposing, but uh, we are ourselves not uh, very much in favor of this, that we should add a new tagging mode hybrid uh, in the SI for the bridge tagging mode attribute uh, as as of what I have currently uh, uh, look on look forward we have on uh, bridge tagging mode are only two tagged and untagged adding a new hybrid mode will be more uh, vendor specific and it will create a new overhead for the vendors which we ourselves are not very much uh, proposing the idea so these are the three options what we were looking for the proposing switchboard mode hybrid in Sonic and these were some set of uh, commands that we will be proposing. We can just put this in the uh, Sonic HLD community and then we can move forward. Uh, all I was just seeking guidance from all of you and from the vendor folks that uh, our approach is uh, even better or not uh, what i am thinking and that you all are right and you are just correctly mentioned us uh, for the echo and other perspective we can just look forward to that and uh, propose a more better use case for this along with some diagrams with no side changes as far as my understanding so thank you everyone for your guidance any certain comments Um, I, I actually I seems to remember there's some ASIC uh, that is um, had this special um, parts uh, allow the, the the user to program based on Mac and assign the VLAN. Um, I don't know the uh, how it's implemented in the ASIC. I've seen uh, at least maybe two vendors doing this uh yeah but uh yeah it's not something commonly used it even can be done by priority as i recall reading some of the spec uh, yeah but uh mm -hmm. yeah i rarely see any usage of that maybe uh, yeah but it, it's kind of very special uh very special uh specific to some some specific ASIC, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. so even for your proposal to make, it, it's really not hybrid mode. It's really come kind of like a special, like maybe source Mac, um, VLAN mapping mode or something like that. Uh, yeah. It's, okay. Because what you, you call hybrid, it's too. It's also too big. I mean. Uh, yeah, the scope, you know, uh, the hardware must be able to use something in the packet itself to make this decision. And you need to be more specific on the specification on that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Genoa. Yes, thank you so much, Genoa, for your guidance. And thank you so, so much, Jay, Ma, uh, Ravi, and others. Uh, uh, for your guidance on this, I will uh, for sure look your uh, look for your comments and uh, upgrade my title and further uh, scope of the HLD as well before putting it up to the Sonic uh, community. Uh, thanks a lot, everyone, for your time. I would request uh, all of you if you have any other specific concern, you can just put your comment on the HLD uh, on the PR as well. Thanks a lot once again. Hey, uh, uh, hi, uh, I think, uh, can you hear me now? <laughs> yes, we can. Hey, hey, sorry uh, for the early um, uh, confusion. Hey, thanks, Jen Ha, Jay, uh, uh, I'm driving the meeting and reviewing. Uh, any other topic we would like to discuss? Lorita, thank you. 7 p.m. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I have yeah, a raising I, PR as well after this one. Yeah, actually, maybe let's uh, see if we could quickly go through um, 
uh, the current open ones. So uh, let me uh, share my screen. Uh, Yeah, so um, this one was just one hour ago. Uh, this one, did, did we review this one? I, does anyone, oh, Jay, you already approved. Okay. And- uh, This is the same one I was asking about. Right? Oh, okay, okay. Oh yeah, yeah, I wasn't here, sorry. Uh, good, good. Uh, okay, so, uh, okay, uh, actually, I have a question for this one. Um, does anyone uh, have any concern or are you interested to review this PR? Don't, uh, I think we haven't gotten any review feedback. Yeah, anyone has any opinion on this one? All right. Uh, so so then it looks like, uh, so actually this one, uh, I think Ravi left, but I'm thinking whether Ravi would like to help to close it. Uh, and uh, there are few ones. So these are the few main ones I'm looking at then. Uh, anyone has anything that I miss? Oh, wait, uh, Rita, yeah. there is a CRM for ECMP and VOQ. This, uh, this has become stale. Yeah, uh, yeah. I just sent an email. I'm thinking maybe Ravi would like to help to. Yeah, this is already reviewed multiple times, and there was a document which I put, which has nothing to do with this PR, but that's put just for if you see the. Oh, files. he looks like he or he just read. Yeah, yeah. So I have to just create a new PR, close this one, and then merge. So I'll do it today. Uh, if, oh, if... sorry. You mean this one? Uh, we shouldn't merge. This one is stale, so I'm not able to reconcile the, you know, the enum shifts. But right now it's passing, no, it, right? No, because it's, if you go to the file check, it, it's all messed up. I tried to reconcile. Go to the files check then, up. Uh, you mean? The files, here? yeah. Yeah. And the history is all messed up. Uh, this is okay, actually. Uh, oh, it's only an empty file here. Yeah, yeah. So it got. How about the header file? Where is it? Yeah, it got. I was trying to uh, do the, uh, you know, force commit, etc., and this completely messed up. So, oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I have to close this. Open a new one again. Oh. Okay. 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 Then, so then will you be able to do this quickly? I'll do it today. I'll do it today. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, and all right, then, thanks. Uh, and then uh, Ravi, uh, and I think this is approved. So if you can just, I don't know if Ravi's here or not. I'll, I'll he, I think he just left. Okay. So yeah, if you can uh, just review one and Rita you, then we, because this is reviewed and. and you know. I, I know, I know, I know, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think these are the few ones uh, I'm looking at then, yeah. This one, it um, okay. Seems okay then. Uh, so that data is that confirming that it would be merged. Uh, sorry, I still. Yeah, yeah. I think so. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, uh, let's work on uh, closing these PLs um next couple of days. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Jan. Yeah, thanks. Thanks.